going to seek the Lord's face together, please, in prayer. Let us pray that the Lord will come this evening and minister to us as we are gathered here in the Lord's house. Our gracious Father, how we do rejoice today that unto us the child is born, the Son has been given. We thank Thee that the one who is the eternal Son of God has been made flesh, that He came and dwelt among men. And Lord, we thank Thee for that great revelation of Thy eternal purpose as our Saviour came. We thank Thee for the wonderful story of redemption, that Jesus Christ took that human flesh, that He might live that perfect life. Lord, we thank Thee for His atoning death. We thank Thee that while no angel could be the mediator on our behalf, no angel could make that atonement, we thank Thee for the sufficient work of our Lord Jesus Christ. And O oh Lord, we rejoice today that our Saviour has ascended up on high, that he has finished that great work of purchasing redemption. We thank Thee that in these days the Holy Spirit is working and drawing souls into the kingdom of God, ministering Christ to the saints of God. And Lord, it is our earnest desire that in this carol service this evening that we will know the Lord drawing near and that that Christ will be ministered to our hearts afresh. We pray that every believer will be encouraged and strengthened in the gospel. And we pray, dear Lord, for any among us who are not yet converted. We pray, dear Lord, that blinded eyes this day will be opened and that sinners will be brought to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. And come, dear Lord, then, and minister to our hearts in this gallery. Take, we pray in our Lord's great name. Amen. Amen. Now, through the Old Testament, there was a continual longing that Christ would come. And we were singing off that in the opening paraphrase. And Anna is going to come now to minister to us in song. And she's going to sing, O come, O come, Amen. Thank you. 
I'd be honored for bringing those beautiful words to us. Go on to ask Bevis if he'll come now and read the scriptures for us. He's going to read from Luke chapter 1, verse 30, where the angel appeared unto Mary. Luke chapter 1, from verse 30. Thank you. Luke chapter 1, from verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord, Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son, in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called Bella, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Thank you, Bevis. We're going to sing together the hymn number 77, the hymn number 77, just the verse 1 of page 206. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her King. And as Mary received that message, what a great message of joy it was, though she was afraid, this was indeed joy to the world. Just the verse 1 remaining soon. Thank you. 
chapter 2, verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was, uh, was of the house of the land of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, and keeping watch over them, over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will, or men. Thank you, Brian, for reading the scriptures to us. We're going to sing together again, and we're singing from the hymn 78, A Little Town of Bethlehem, How Still We See Thee Lie. At this time we'll stand as we sing, and we'll sing the entire Carol together. It's number 17.
quite a number of the carols take out this theme of Christ born in Bethlehem. Uh, so we're also going to sing some words from number 80. Number 80, once in royal David City, stood a lowly cattle shed. Number 80, remaining seated singing the verses 1 and 6.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Mary, see that is born king of the Jews, for we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And he said unto, and they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And now Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, shall rule my people, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he said, and he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when he had found him, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till he came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child Mary with his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Amen. Thank you, Chris, for reading the scriptures to us. As Chris was reading about the wise men, we're going to have an instrumental now concerning the wise men as with gladness men of old. And some of the young people from the Friday night meeting are going to come and play musical instruments for us. And we'll ask them to come and do that now, please. And we'll ask um, Craig and Danny if you could come up here to the pulpit with me and Karis if you come as well.
Go on to ask things straight for the second first verse, go ahead and finish it. Thou shalt call the same Jesus, for he, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. 
At Christmas time we often think about gifts. We love to receive gifts, love to give gifts. As we think of that, various questions have been asked as to where that originated. Someone talked about the gifts of the wise men. The greatest gift was God's gift. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten Son. The gift of our Lord Jesus Christ as he came in human flesh is the greatest gift that ever has been given on earth. The story is told of a poor lady who had a sick daughter. And each day when the mother would come home, the daughter would ask her what she had brought. And the daughter in particular was asking, have you brought grapes? But they didn't live in a place where the grapes were readily available. They didn't live in a place where grapes grew. It was winter. The grapes were expensive. But every day the child would ask, did you buy me grapes today? One day when the mother was out walking, she noticed a great conservatory. And in the conservatory, in this great garden, she could see grapes. And so she entered in and she was stopped by the groundsman. And she asked him if she would be able to purchase some of these grapes. She offered a shilling. But she was rebuffed and she felt that maybe I've been refused because I didn't offer enough. And she felt I, I need to save more and come back when I have more money and then I will seek to purchase the grapes. When she raised two shillings, we, she went back. Again, the groundsman tried to remove her. But as he was seeking to remove her, a young lady approached. And the young lady was asking what the trouble was. And so the mother, she began to explain about her sick child. She began to explain about the desire of the sick child. And the lady then took the mother into the conservatory. She cut armfuls of grapes and gave them on to the mother. And the mother said, I can't have them all. I only have two shillings to pay you. The lady refused. She said, I am the daughter of the king. A king does not sell. A king delights to give. A king does not sell. A king delights to give. And isn't that a reminder of the great story of the gospel? Almighty God delights to give, for God so loved that he gave his only begotten Son. And glad it doesn't say God so loved that he offered his Son if men could pay. No, there's grace in this text. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave freely. He gave generously. Here is God's great grace to the undeserving, those that have nothing to offer. And spiritually speaking, we are worse off than that poor mother. We don't even have two shillings, spiritually speaking, to offer God to earn salvation. We have nothing to offer. We have nothing to give except our sinful hearts. God so loved that he gave. These words remind me of another great text in 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, or his indescribable gift. God's gift, the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, cannot be fully described. No words can adequately describe the greatness of the gift. And in the moments that are left then, I want us to think just briefly about this unspeakable or indescribable gift. Why is the gift of Christ to the world beyond adequate human description? First of all, 
because love is its foundation. Love is its foundation. God so loved that he gave. And so the giving of our Lord Jesus is the outworking of God's great love. We read the book of Romans, God commendeth his love toward us, or God demonstrates his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the great proof of love then was in the coming of Jesus Christ, and in particular his coming, that he might die. And here then is this great pledge of love, God so loved that he gave one of the Puritans, Lavelle, said that Christ is the richest jewel in God's cabinet. And God did not withhold from us the most precious jewel. Paul's great argument in Romans chapter 8 is that he freely, freely gave them up for us all. And therefore there are many things that accompany that gift, as we'll see in a moment or two. Tonight as we... I think of the wonderful news of the coming of Christ. Christ came because of God's love. God so loved that he gave. But then this gift is also indescribable because it was not given alone. It was not given alone. As God gave the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is accompanied with a great number of of gifts. Christ's gift, the gift of Christ, is a gift that is accompanied in John chapter 6. We have the account of the feeding of the 5,000, the 5,000 men, and then there were ladies and children in addition. In John chapter 6, 32, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you that gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. And so Christ is the manna, the bread that has come down from heaven. But with the coming of the bread, with the coming of the manna, there is life. In John chapter 4, we read of Christ as the living water, and as Christ has come as the living water, he gives the satisfaction, the contentment that is associated with that. And so we could go through the New Testament to speak of how with this great gift has come pardon, forgiveness, peace with God, adopted into God's family. So our Lord said in our text, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish. We were born perishing, born in sin, born in need. But here is the gospel. The gift has been given that sinners would not perish. Because with the gift of Christ as the baby in Bethlehem, all of these other gifts come in association with it. And the duty upon the sinner tonight is this. Believe. Believe. You must receive Christ yourself. Whosoever believeth in him. It's a wonderful thing to believe in the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing to believe in the truth of the crucifixion. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. But have you believed in him? Have you received him? This gift of Christ is beyond description. As we think of the gifts that are associated with it. It was not given alone. And then finally, this gift is indescribable, indescribable because of the uniqueness of it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. His only begotten Son. Now, this particular part of the text is disputed and, and not all 
the versions translated as it is here in the authorised version. But I believe the authorised version has it right. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The translation he gave his one and only Son is a weak translation. This word begotten was held by our forefathers to be a necessary word. It was understood by them to be bringing out wonderful truths concerning Christ's person. So the word is translated here, only begotten. It sometimes does have the idea of only, only son. It can have the idea of unique son. But there is in it this idea of begetting. And what has been emphasized is this, that Christ is the Son of God by right. And Christ is the only Son of God by right. There are the sons of God by adoption. But Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son. If you're a Christian, you are a son or a daughter of God. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That is, he gave the one of his own essence, of his own being, the same substance. Jesus Christ is very God of very God. And that's what John is emphasizing in this gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And here then John he is emphasizing or it's Christ emphasizing John records that Christ emphasizes to Nicodemus. God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. You see some mere man could not be your saviour. This saviour had to be the very son of God in human flesh. He had to be God and man. He had to represent the needs of man before a holy God. And there is none that has ever been entitled to such a position except our Lord Jesus Christ. These words are bringing us to see then that Christ is the great mediator. This is a unique gift. There is no gift like it's a gift that is offered to you tonight. As we think of Christmas time or any time of celebration, when a gift is offered, you don't reach for your purse or your wallet to, to pay for the gift. That would be an offense. You receive. You receive. And tonight, praise God, the gospel message is not try to make yourself a little bit better and hopefully by this time next year you'll be able to have the gift. No. The gospel is receive it now. Receive it when you're unworthy. Receive it when you're not good enough because you never will be good enough. That's the whole point of the gospel. So you're to come empty handed. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I claim. Christ came as the only begotten Son of the Father. He was the one then that was entitled to give himself upon Calvary, to bear away our sin. What a great Savior. And this Christmas may we say thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, for his gift beyond adequate human description. God so loved the world that he gave. So trust the Lord will take his word and pray on all our hearts. We're going to sing in closing, please, number 85. Number 85. It's on page 210. Again, number 85, page 210. Again, thank you all for coming this evening. It's good to see each one in the meeting. There are refreshments provided afterwards at the back, so we encourage you to wait with us for that time of fellowship.
uh, during the meeting. And thank you to all those that took part in the meeting this evening. We do appreciate that labour of love in the Lord's name. So number 85 will stand as we sing this and then remaining standing for closing. Thank you. 